Hey, how you doing? Justin here, back for another blues study. This one I call Lick and Riff, which is all about mixing your shuffle riffs with some lead lines, some lead licks. Now, I'm going to take you through a set example like I usually do, but we're going to talk a bit about the conceptual stuff as well. I've kept it rhythmically fairly straight because the key thing here, the most important thing when you start mixing lead lines into rhythm is that you stay aware of the beat, where the groove is. It's not like you play a bit of rhythm and it's in time and it sounds cool and then you just go off and do some random rhythms in your lead lines. It won't feel right when you come back in. So the key thing is keeping time through the lead part. The thing I would suggest you do to start off with is keeping the rhythm of the licks simple first. So trying to play on the beat or playing one and two and three and four and that kind of thing, just so you stay hyper aware of the beat. It really is the most important thing. If you don't follow my advice there, it's likely to kind of not work or feel good for you or for anyone listening. The other really key thing is using this, playing the rhythm on beat one as kind of a launch pad into the lick. Again, it's the kind of thing that changes a little bit, the better you get. You can start to kind of avoid those things and not play on the one. But to start off with, I think it's a real key thing to stay aware of. You'll find this pattern following through the whole song, except for the intro, where we've got this two bars of rhythm, two bars of lead. I would recommend keeping the rhythm parts fairly simple. You don't want to go too crazy in that and crazy in the lead part as well, because it doesn't make for as nice a contrast between the sections. Uh, and also it means that you might just get yourself a little bit lost. You're much more, you know, keeping that groove on for the rhythm thing and really feeling where you are and then trying to keep that momentum, keep that groove going through the lead part is the thing that's going to make this work. Again, I'd recommend learning the set study first of all, and then changing the set study, changing some of the notes, exploring how it kind of works before you go kind of into free improv. But that is the goal. The goal is longer term to be able to improvise within it uh, completely. Now, we're going to start off with a little intro lick. Uh, something that I feel like I should mention as well is that all of these little intros I'm doing on the Blue Studies are interchangeable. So do experiment with taking this intro and applying it to one of the other studies or using one of the other intros that you liked on this one. Ideally, you want to be mixing them all up together longer term. But uh, definitely intros and endings are something that you should be experimenting with swapping over as soon as you learn them, really. So let's get to a close up and check out the intro. have the intro. Now, this first chord, really interesting one, it's an E7 chord, but it's a closed one. We're not playing the thickest two strings. First finger, second fret on the fourth string, third finger, fourth fret on the third string, second finger, third fret on the second string, and little finger down, fourth fret of the thinnest string. There's the root note, that's the note E. It is pretty much like a D7, open D7 chord with different fingers, slid up, there's the root note. Movable shape, like I said, so if you put that note on the note A, for example, at the seventh fret, this is an, this is an, uh, an A7 chord now. Now, we're going to play that four times. Now, notice as well, actually, I should point out, I'm using my fingers to grab. It's like a block. Grabbing, putting them back. You get this kind of mute in between each of the notes when you play it that way. Might be something fun to experiment with. You can definitely play this whole thing with a pick as well. So, or you could really, you know, you can explore playing this however you like. I would recommend maybe as a starting point having a go at checking out these different techniques just to give you some new food. So, okay, this is a block technique where you're playing it all together. So, one and two and then we drop all of it back except for the first finger. We're going to do four picks on that one as well. This is an E diminished chord, popularized by guys like Robert Johnson used to do this kind of... It will move quite often. Okay, E, E diminished. One, two, and three, four. Okay, open A, A sharp. B, little climb up, 
and then the rest of the chord goes down for a strum on beat four. So one and two and three and four and one, two and three, four. Okay, I use my thumb and then a finger for the chord. But like I said, you can experiment. That might be a nice place to start though. So now we're into the first 12 bar sequence with the two bars of the rhythm and the two bars of the lead. Important thing to realize here is I've tried to keep the riff variations fairly simple. There's one type that I'm using for the first chorus, the first time through the 12 bars, different one I'm using for the second part. You can use variations, feel free to experiment a little bit. Key thing here is remembering that we're finishing on beat one before we do the lead line. Okay, it's a really good launch pad, helps you stay in the groove. So the very first one, we're starting with an E shuffle. With that little variation, they're using the second and third fingers and the third and fourth fret up to the A. And then we've got again, the same two notes, third and fourth frets on the thicker string to the E on beat one, and then a little mute. Okay, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one okay that one is really really the crux here getting used to finishing on that before you go into the lead line will make a huge difference like i said you can play this with a pick if you're not confident playing individual notes with your fingers or using your thumb some people find it a bit weird to do this thing with the thumb I think it's a good idea to have learnt it, or at least explored it. You know, it frees up lots of different things later on if you want to get into this uh, style of playing. But you don't have to. You could choose to use a pick for all of that and just use down picks for all of that rhythm stuff if you prefer. Now the lead line, we're just using minor pentatonic, open E, minor pentatonic, E, blues sort of things. It's starting on beat two. We have one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three. Now we're going to leave off the four and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So starting on beat two, and I'm putting a little curl on. You don't have to do that, but just a little bit of a bend makes it sound real bluesy. So one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, one. So start with the chord. When you're practicing it, start with the chord. One, two, three, and one and two and three four one. I'm just using my first finger to pluck all of those notes. A very common thing of guys like Eric Clapton do it that way. Uh, you can use different fingers if you like. There's no set rules here, so experiment a little bit, see what feels comfortable for you. You could choose to use other fingers. I do find myself using alternate fingerings at, at different points. Uh, even here with the, this hand, sometimes I'll finish on second finger, other times I'll finish on the first finger. It really doesn't matter. Just choose the one that feels comfortable for you. When you're practicing that one, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, four, I'm not playing on beat four, giving myself a chance to get back to that rhythm. Now, when you first start, that might be a good idea. In the set piece, I've added a climb in, this little third and fourth fret on the thicker string leading up to the A. So we have one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one, two, three, four and one and two and three, four and one. Now, adding the little climb up sounds real cool. You don't have to do it. And when you're first starting it, you might want to just leave out those two notes. I've included them because it's easy enough to leave them out if you want or add them in as you progress. I always like that leading back into the rhythm thing. I think it sound, makes it sound kind of confident like you meant to do it, not like you stumbled into it. As you get better, you might not even come back on one. You might continue the lead line going and come back later, but that takes considerable, considerably more awareness of where you are within the 12 bar sequence. For most of you, you'll probably find that a little sticky if you've not done it before, which is why we're keeping it simple for now. Okay, first four bars again, then I'll go into the next four bars. So we start with the E, three, four, E. Variation, A. Variation, finish on one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, and A. Finish on one. 
Okay, so exactly the same sort of idea, A with a variation. Gone down to the thicker string there for the climb up, but you don't have to. And then we're finishing on the E1. Stop. And then we're going into a lead line again, starting on beat two, two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one. We've got the little classic climb up to the B again. One, two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one. Now again, I would recommend practicing that with the beat once again. One, two and three and four and one and two and three, four. Nothing on beat four. Just getting used to cycling that around, getting used to going from the chord into the lead stuff, back to the chord, into the lead stuff. Longer term, you could experiment with that. It's something I've spent quite a lot of time doing. It's just playing that bass note and then trying to play a lead line and coming back to it, improvising within it, but starting off, keeping it real simple. Now we've got the climb. If you want to add it in, four and to the B7. Really nice way again, if you're doing the finger style thing, is to play the bass note on beat one, and then a little strum down up with the first finger. One, two, and three, four, and. Now we've gone to the A. We could have gone back to a variation, but I wanted to get in this A7 as well. I think it works real nice after that particular B. Okay, so this is first finger barring the second fret strings two, three, and four. Third finger going down, third fret on the thinner string. Okay, so one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Now we've got our little turnaround. Yeah, okay, just another classic little lead line, quite a common one, this one. Bass note on beat one, two, and three, and four, and. fret open, third fret open, second fret open, first fret. Okay, this comes from the E chord. This is our little highlight for the E harmony. Second fret open on the fourth string to the bass note of the B7, followed by the chord if you want. One, two, and three, and four, Let's take it one time from the top of the 12 bar sequence. Three, four on E. Climb to A, two, three. Climb to E on one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three. Climb to A if you want. With a little variation. I would recommend getting solid with that first 12 bar sequence before moving on. The theme is the same, so if you get that down, you should find the second 12 bar form kind of similar. We're just introducing some more licks, some more flowing ideas into the next patterns, a couple of little variations as well on the riff, but it's essentially the same sort of thing. So moving on to the first four bars of the second 12 bar blues progression. We start with the E chord with that variation where we go up to the fifth fret. So this to the A. One. Okay, it's that stopping on beat one. So one. Two. Three. Now this time we're kind of doing a lead line that goes right into the A. We're going down that scale, finishing on the note A. Okay? One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. 
Again, you can be using your first finger for most of that lead line. Sometimes I would use first finger, first finger, second finger on the thinnest string. You really can use whatever fingers you like in that sort of circumstance if you're using a pick. It's a little bit more set. It really is up to you. There are a lot less rules in this kind of playing than there you might think. It's it, Everyone seems to do it a little different and that's totally fine. So. To the A. I must say, I, I do notice myself using fingers all of the way down and then thumb joins in again when it goes to the rhythm. You don't have to. But that might be something to experiment with a little bit. This also has this roll, which is a little unusual. Where your third finger is going to play the third fret on the second string and then have to kind of roll over onto the third fret of the thinner string. Very, very good technique to get under the fingers if it's new to you. Okay, it's called a little roll there with the with the third finger. So that first four bars again, and then into the next uh, four bars. So E with a climb, then to A. So the first A, fairly standard with little finger or whatever, then so just once on each of those. One and two and three and four and one. Now I've broken it into a, what I think is a really classic blues lick, definitely one that you should add to your repertoire. Again, you can play it with pick and fingers or pick or just fingers like I'm showing you now. We're going to play the E on beat one. Now we're using second finger going into the third fret. Talk about where they're landing first of all. So second finger, third fret, second string, third finger, fourth fret on the third string. It's actually the middle part of this chord we used for the intro is where it's coming from. But you can slide it up from a fret below. Really, really common little phrase. It's just a really cool little lick. So what we're doing is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three. So bass note on one. Two and three is the slide up with this little E7 dyad. You could call it a dyad, it's got two notes. One, two, three, four, one, two. Now, we're sliding back to the second fret. You might like to use your third finger. You could also use your second finger or your first finger. It doesn't really matter. Third finger, if you've just played this, probably works well open then second fret on the fourth string one two three four one two three and four one two three four one two three and four definitely a nice one to cycle just those two bars one two three and four also works nicely as an intro this lick Okay, now we're going to B7, same as we had before, A7, same as we had the first time round. And then we've got a little, a new outro riff, or a little finishing lick. Okay, it's kind of got a bit of a jazzy thing going on at the end. It's a, another one of those kind of bit cliche kind of a blues line, I suppose. Uh, but it works really well, and you should know them because it definitely says it's the end of the tune. If you go, there's no coming back. It's definitely finished at that point, okay? So we're going one, two, three, four. So it's the thinnest two strings. One, then first fret, second fret, third fret. One, two, three, four, one and two, and open. 
open, second, fourth fret on the second string, open thinner string. One and two and one, two, three, four, one and two and. Then we're going to play the thicker string. We're going to slide right up so the first finger is barring the thinnest three strings at the seventh fret, little finger or third finger, whatever feels comfortable, will be up on the ninth fret. It's actually an E13 chord, cool. small part of the E13. We don't want to hear the fourth and fifth strings though. Okay, so just the thicker string and those thinnest three. Let's play right through that second 12 bar sequence nice and slow. Here we go, from the E, three, four, one. Another fancier variation. My favourite lick. Two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, three. A. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and. Don't worry too much about the rhythm of that very last part. Now, if you want to learn how to mix licks into your blues rhythm playing, learning some set pieces is the best place to start, I think. But for sure, many of you are going to want to learn to improvise long term. The key thing is keeping the groove when you move to playing the lead parts. You've got to keep the rhythm solid. You need to feel the rhythm in you. You've got to keep your foot stomping. If, you're, if your rhythm wanders, or your time, you slow down or speed up or add too many beats in, it's not going to feel right. If I just do like a bad example. Even if the rhythm's good. It just, it doesn't feel right. It's like, whoa, well, what happened there? It all it got a bit wonky. You'd be much better off keeping the lick real simple and keeping the time on. So if you had... Uh the end there I needed to get back to the B and I had to suddenly kind of rush myself to make it through. That's the kind of thing that takes practice and experience and by starting real simple getting solid with that you're gonna find yourself probably pushing into unknown territory and trying to have to scramble your way back to the chord especially if you start playing lead lines away from the neck. So if you undergo the A Now I had to really quickly get back to the A. Sometimes you might find that you're too late and you have to come on a later beat. Longer term, this is, I'm kind of giving you the, what happens when things go wrong a little bit. So if we had E, A, So what I was doing then is finishing my lead line on beat one of the rhythm. Just like when we have the rhythm and we have three, four, one, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, four. Now I'm saying the rhythm on beat two as well. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one. By then. Thank you. 
Now, I started trying to be a bit silly there and play right across the bar so that the lead lines were starting earlier than beat one or beat two. Longer term, it should feel a little floatier than that. But what I'm trying to, I've kind of gone off on a little bit of a tangent here, but the point is, if I come sweeping back in, the point is when you start, you need to keep it simple because as you get more complicated, it gets a lot harder. When you're trying to feel your way through where you are in the in the progression and that you know what chord you've got to come back to in this, for me, it's a little bit like there's a 12 bar blues a straight ahead, real boring one running around in my musical imagination. So I can always jump back in on it in order to build that in that sequence. So you always know where to get back in. You have to start simple. And that's why I'm emphasizing the importance of keeping the rhythm of your licks simple to start off with and making sure that you finish whatever section there on a beat one and then move into the the change, whether it's the lead or the rhythm. I wouldn't recommend starting the rhythm on beat two for quite some time. Just concentrate on finishing the rhythm on beat one, doing some lead line and coming back in on beat one for the rhythm stuff again. I think that's by far the easiest starter for this. And don't be in a hurry because there's like, you can get a lot of mileage out of this. Just when I was writing this little arrangement, I spent so long just fiddling about trying to find different licks and trying to find ones that work, but it was, there were so many options, so many different ways of approaching that. And you can explore all of that stuff on your own. It's not, nothing that I'm talking about was very difficult. It's just exploring, finding out, improvising, figuring out what works, using licks that you've learned in, in other songs and seeing where they can fit into all of this. You know, there's, there is a lot of fun to be had here. Do remember that there is a PDF file and a guitar profile for free over on the website, but remember you might take the idea, make your own tab, use your own variations, use your own licks, but write it as a set piece using this format. That's a really good kind of bridging step there between learning my set one and making up your own, because there are no rules. There are no rules here. You can do whatever you want. You can explore it whatever way you like to. Okay, plenty more of these blue studies over on the website if you've missed the first few already and a few more coming up as well. If you happen to be over on YouTube, I really appreciate it. If you hit that subscribe button, slap the like, uh, hit the bell notification on my channel if you want to get notified when I do new videos or when I do some live stuff. I hope you're enjoying this. I would love to see covers of you playing it. So do let me know either in the comments or hit me up on Instagram or over on the website in the comment section on this lesson. Love to see how you're getting on with these kind of arrangements. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You'll take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.